بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصدر Umar ibn al-Khattab said that if there was to be a caller from the heavens, that everyone is going to go to heaven except for one person, I would fear that I am that one person. But then he also said, if there was to be a caller to say that everyone is going to hellfire except for one person, then I would hope to be that one person. That really shows you the way that these people thought in terms of hope and fear. They had the highest hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they never became complacent. And what that means is that when you're asking Allah for Jannah, don't sit there and think, well, I don't do all these amazing things that everybody else does. I don't belong in this category or that category. Think to yourself, how can I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely for the highest level of al-firdaus, the highest level of paradise, and then start to bring into my life those qualities that also might seem unattainable right now. So Jannah doesn't just have levels and degrees. There are entire sections of Jannah that reflect a certain level of highness that you want to aspire to. And so, for example, you have the Jannah that is Al-Ma'wa. And Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, this is the place of the shuhada who are in the bodies of green birds and they are waiting for Ar-Rahman to bring them into Jannah in the fullest sense. And SubhanAllah, Al-Ma'wa is a place of relief. And so they will be relieved in the greatest way. And then you have Jannah to Adn, okay? And this is translated as the Garden of Eden, but I want you to think about levels here, inshallah ta'ala. So Jannah to Adn refers to the highest garden, and then there are specifics of Jannah to Adn that we're going to speak about. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma says something very powerful. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created four things by his hand, the throne, the pen, Adn, and Adam alayhi salam. And then he said to the rest of the creation, kun fakan, be and it was. And what that means is that there's something very special about this particular part of Jannah that reflects an even more customized reward for the believers. We're not just talking about the ghuraf now. We're not just talking about the special rooms. We're talking about a section of paradise. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was narrated to have said, Allah created Jannah to Adn, the garden of Eden by his hand putting one brick of white pearl, another one from red rubies, another one of green crystal. Its floor is musk, its ground is of pearl, and its grass is of saffron. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered it to speak. And it said, Qad aflah al mu'minun. The believers have succeeded. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa izzati wa jalali la yujawiruni fika bakhil. That I swear by my majesty and my honor, no stingy person is going to be my neighbor in you. Meaning this is a generous reward for generous people. And the Prophet وسلم, recited, That whoever is saved from the greed of the soul will truly be successful. And so you want this customized, generous reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then you need to be a generous person, not someone who is stingy, because that's not a place that's befitting to a stingy person. Shimr ibn Atiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he goes on to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created al-firdaus by his hand and he opens it five times every day and he says to it, beautify yourself for my awliya. Izdadi husnan li awliya'i. Increase yourself in beauty for my friends. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from his awliya. Allahumma ameen. So you then have al-firdaus. So basically think about al-adn, in the broader sense, and then specifically from Jannah to Adn, you have Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. And it is what the Prophet Sallallahu said, the highest, the most spacious, and the best of Al-Jannah. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you ask Allah, don't just ask Him for Jannah, ask Him for Al-Firdaus. It is the best of paradise. It is the highest of paradise. And above it is the throne of Ar-Rahman 
and from it flow the rivers of paradise. Now, who is Al-Firdaus forbidden to? The Prophet Sallallahu said that when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created Al-Firdaus by his hand, he forbade it for every mushrik, every polytheist, and those who are addicted to wine and to drugs. And what the scholars say that that's speaking about is that idea that, of course, Jannah is forbidden as a whole to a mushrik, to someone who associates a partner with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But it's saying that how can a person expect the highest reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when they resort consistently to the lowest sins. And so let this be motivation to remove the low sins, the khaba'ith, the filthy things that are not befitting of a person who seeks a high reward. So you have Jannatu Adn, you have al firdaus and then you have Al-Wasila, Al-Wasila. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Wasilatu darajatun indallah, that Wasila is a daraja, it's a degree with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Laysa fawqaha daraja. There is no degree over this particular degree. Fasalu Allaha and yu'tiyani al wasila. So ask Allah to grant me al wasila. Who are we to make dua for the Prophet to be granted something? Does he need our dua? No. But let's talk about this for a moment. So you have al firdaus, and then you have this one place that belongs to one person. And why is it called Al-Wasila? Because Al-Wasila means the connection and it is directly connected to the throne of Ar-Rahman and it's in its highest reach. As Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah said, it is a place perched out for one person in the highest place of Al-Jannah and only one person can occupy it. And it must be the one person who will intercede on behalf of all of mankind on the Day of Judgment. And it must be the one person who is khayru khalqillah, who is the best of Allah's creation and the most beloved of Allah's creation to him. And it must be that one person, al-wasila, in that connected place, who connected more people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than any other human being in history and brought more people to Jannah than any other human being in history. Who deserves al-wasila more than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? And the scholars mention, of course, that on the scale of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is not just his good deeds, but every single good deed that any believer has ever done or will ever do, is on the scale of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when we're talking about building our palaces, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi gets a share of that, and a share of that, and a share of that. So think of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who used to pull us up and who continues to intercede for us and continues to move people forward, being in this unique position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah that everyone recognizes and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa continuing to be the one who occupies that highest position and brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you hear the mu'adhan call the adhan, then send salawat upon me. Because every time you send salawat upon me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send 10 prayers upon you. And then ask Allah to grant me al-wasila, which is a status in paradise, which only one servant of Allah will get. And I hope to be that person. And whoever asks al-wasila for me, then my intercession, my shafa'ah will be due for that person. And how do we do so? Allahumma rabba hadihi da'wati tamma والصلاه القائمه ات محمد الوسيله والفضيله وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته انك لا تخلف الميعاد O oh Allah the lord of this perfect call and established prayer grant Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-wasila grant him this place of great reward and intercession and grant him this bounty and give him this honored station that you have promised him because verily you do not neglect your promises. And what does the Prophet ﷺ do with his wasila, with his connection? He uses it to grant you wasail, to grant you connections to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Think of the reward of sending salawat on the Prophet ﷺ. This is even more special than that. You have the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ. Now here's the thing. The Prophet ﷺ said, ask for al wasila for him, which is at the top of al firdaus and it's for one person. But he said, ask for al-firdaus for yourself. And when you think about what Jannah means to you and what you want in al-Jannah, 
You know, a lot of people will start to mention things that are okay to mention, right? Anything you're abstaining from in this life and you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for in the next, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. Alhamdulillah, it's Jannah and we're human beings and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows us. And there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us so many incentives. But what if you love the Prophet sallallahu so much that Jannah is being with the Prophet sallallahu And subhanAllah, you think about al Madina in this world. And the most painful thing to the Sahaba was when the Prophet ﷺ departed from this world, Medina didn't feel like Medina to them anymore. And for us, what is it like when we go to al Medina? We don't feel that same thing that the Sahaba once felt, even though Medina feels amazing. Now, what does this have to do with Jannah? SubhanAllah, there's a powerful narration. al Allah ta'ala anhu, he was asked, tell us something, you shall wiquna ila Jannah that's gonna make us really, really, really want Jannah. Like tell us something that's gonna really make us want Jannah. And you know what he said? He said, Fiha Rasulullah. In it is the Prophet In Jannah, we get to be with the Prophet That's enough. And the only thing that's greater than that is being with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala Himself. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah ارجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي